everybody, this is Praxis, and today I'm working on the east and the west walls of the east and the west greenhouse. Here's one of them. I'm on the east greenhouse, and this is the eastern wall. Uh, as you can see, it's going really well. I've got it sheathed all the way up to here. I just got a little bit more to do on the top. The uh, western greenhouse wall is an exact parody of this. I'm gonna, going back and forth between the two of them. Uh, and uh, I wanted to talk about two things. One is uh, kind of abstaining from making some architectural decisions. Uh, until you have to. And what I mean by that is uh, this uh, doorway, I wanted to be at least three feet wide so I could bring things that were three feet wide into the greenhouse. And I figured maybe about four feet tall. It didn't have to be exactly four feet tall. So what I decided to do was I set the bottom height here based on the thickness of a, a two by six that I have on the bottom here. Uh, and that left a little bit of a gap. Once I put the eight, eight inch boards on here, uh, there was a gap of about uh, one and three quarters uh, of an inch. I did the boards up the side, and then what I decided to do is so that I could get this board here to fill in here, I decided to uh, set the top so that I would cut one and three quarters of an inch out of this guy, which set uh, the header here at four foot and a half an inch, which is totally fine. Now, if I'd made it four feet uh, it went, and I sliced out this bit here, I would have gotten a piece of scrap that wouldn't quite have fit in here. But by making this just a little bit taller, which is fine, I ended up getting a piece that fits perfectly for down there. So whenever you can, uh, you know, wait on certain things like that and make decisions, uh, you know, when you have to, as opposed to, you know, just arbitrarily ahead of time, you can really optimize your scrap oftentimes. If you guys recall, the, uh, the way that I set the posts on the shed was specifically designed to uh, minimize scrap of the boards that I was putting on it. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about is, again, just use of simple tools. Uh, well, I, this, bow uh, this board has a bow in it. Uh, you can see there's a crack here. That's why I positioned you so close. You can see that crack. If I put all of my, you know, 80 pounds of body weight or whatever I've got, I, I weigh more than 80 pounds, but I'm a light guy. Uh, if I put all my weight on there, you know, I can kind of close up that gap. I can improve it. And it's really awkward and strenuous trying to sink a nail while I'm doing that on my own. But if I take just a couple simple tools, uh, this is uh, just a piece of tongue and groove board uh, so that I don't put any dents in in uh, the one I'm actually using. And this is just a, a lever, and I'm just gonna set it in there. And just watch how, how you know, I, I was straining to do it before and barely, uh, barely able to do it. Look at that, just a tiny bit of force over here. It makes it really, really easy. So don't diminish the value of primitive tools. You can get all kinds of awesome work achieved with them. It's not all about the latest high-tech gizmos. It's oftentimes just about knowing how to use a couple pieces of scrap wood to take a difficult or possibly impossible job with one person and make it, like you saw, really easy. That's it. Thanks for watching.